everybody, welcome back to my channel, Diamond Painting with Anxiety. I'm Karen. Wanted to do a quick video today and just show you guys how I kit up a new project for a resident. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so first of all, this this particular resident, she had started a real, oh, you may have got a glimpse of my address, who cares? She had started a real small project and the kids got a hold of it. So we were trying to come up with some way of keeping it a little bit safer. So I cut some cardboard, used a clip to attach the piece right here. Um, that way she can close it so the kids don't, you know, notice it quite so much. This can also be slid under her mattress for storage. So that'll make it nice and easy for her. Um, this particular canvas had been chosen by a resident previously and they had had it in their room for quite some time and just never done anything with it. And occasionally when a resident will leave, if they haven't done their diamond painting, they will just leave it for another resident to be able to do. They could take it with them. I don't know why they choose to leave it, but they do. So that's fine too. So, but this canvas had been kind of through the ringer it had a lot of bubbles, so I had to go through with my X-Acto knife and remove some of those bubbles. Um, I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, you can see some of the, the areas where, you know, they just kind of look like rivers because I've gone through them and scored them with my X-Acto knife to remove the bubbles. I also, had to iron the back of this canvas because it had some pretty good, you know, um, divots. I don't, I never know what to call them. So, you know, the waves that the back of the canvases get. But I did um, iron it. Keeping it in this board should also help, you know, keep that from, from being an issue. So that's how I set the painting up for her. So she'll be able to work on that. <clears throat> So then this is how I set up their kits. This is one of my big, huge trays. So first of all, I put everything in a Ziploc bag. But this is one of my big, huge trays. I love these. Makes it really easy for organizing the diamonds. So I loan this to them with the, um, with the um, understanding that once they've poured all their drills into their storage, they need to return this to me. But... The, the spout is so big, it just makes it so easy to kit up. And with the, you know, the surface space being really big, it makes less mess. It's easier to get the girls in there. So here's her color key. So she'll have that to be able to use. Again, this painting's kind of been through the mill, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Here's the image that she's doing. Let's see. Yeah, it's really cute. It's going to turn out really cute. Very wrinkled, but it should be fine. Then I set them up with a kit. Um, I like to save all my Diamond Art Club bags. Um, love when I'm able to give them the heart-shaped wax. I save, always save those for the residents. She's got one of Diamond Art Club's blue pens. A squishy and a three placer with a clear boat. So that's in her her little tool kit. And then for this particular resident, um, she like a lot of us struggles with some anxiety. So I wanted to make this process a step e a little bit easier for her. Normally. I will just give them the bags and a stick of a strip of stickers and I'll let them label the bags themselves. If you can see right here, I've numbered the symbol list because they weren't numbered. And then I number their bags. I have them number their bags. I recently went out and purchased these bags that are a little bit bigger size than the small ones that come with kits. Um, I'm no longer using those small ones, 
there's a whole reason behind that. I think I'll do a video with some um, resident updates and some talk about the PATH project real soon. And I'll talk about why I stopped using the small bags that we get from our kits from AliExpress and different places like that. But what I did for this resident, because I want this to be nice and easy for her, I want it to be a, you know, relaxing experience. So I went ahead and I numbered all of her bags and I put the corresponding drill from her um, key into the bags for her. So she'll be able to just cut open the bags, use the large tray to pour them in, and I kind of, you know, she if she wants, she can just start drilling and um, open the bags as she go, as she needs, you know, as she needs to find each symbol. So um, then everything always goes into the big Ziploc bag. With these big bags, like I said, I did start purchasing them. I do like to give them storage when I can. Sometimes I'm gifted some storage and I'll pass it on to the residents. Um, when I go to Harbor Freight, I try to pick up a, a couple extra Harbor Freight um, storage containers and I'll pass those on, but sometimes I just don't have the storage options, so I need to give them this. At Christmas, I ordered um, a, I think six or seven, eight, I don't remember, but one set of, of Harbor, uh, Harbor Freight storage containers for each resident that was diamond painting. Um, I so I thought I saw a video online that said you can't order them on Harbor Freight right now. That's unfortunate. But anyway, I mean, this is a storage solution that definitely works for them. Um, I picked these bags up for, I think, about five bucks for a box of maybe two fifty at Joann's. So not a bad deal. So that's pretty much it. Everything's all ready to go for this resident. She'll be able to start drilling and chilling. So that's how we do it here at the shelter so that the residents can benefit from the um, stress reduction that this craft offers to all of us. So that's pretty much it. But I do want to remind you that we can change lives one drill at a time even if it's only our own, because when we change our lives, the entire world around us is going to change. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you real soon.